this is the progress this is another day another time I have now removed all the wiring because uh, I want to know what I'm working with here when it comes to these filter caps and such I'm gonna measure these filter caps see if they're in acceptable co condition or not and uh, I'm also thinking about what to do with these wires here there's speaker wires just two fins I'm gonna probably replace it and all that but we are now more or less completely clean here as far as wiring goes there are a few jumpers and stuff I left in place because I figured I might want to reuse those but everything is clean I just need to clean everything up now and then we should be able to start building our own circuit here alright so let's start by checking the main electrolytic here half moon is supposed to be 50 microfarads at 450 volts it's measuring 43 so that it's actually starting to go bad so I'm not gonna be using that cap I don't think uh, 40 microfarads at 400 volts on the square which I believe is this one and what was it supposed to be 40 and it is 32 that's not ideal that's really not ideal let's see triangle triangle 20 microfarads and when the meter jumps like this it indicates leakage that's something I've learned about this fluke so yeah these filter caps are bad so we're not gonna be using these filter caps but uh, it's good that we took it all apart and actually discovered the fact that they are bad otherwise we could try to use filter caps that are bad and obviously we all know how that's gonna go so to replace bad filter capacitors we are going to be using F and T electrolytics these kinds F and T these are extremely high quality capacitors these are probably my favorite when it comes to building vacuum tube gear uh, they are extremely reliable and I like them for more reasons than one so we are going to do a bit of work to this and we're gonna make these kinds of capacitors happen in here and we have this terminal strip here which I'm not gonna be using for anything so I figured why not put capacitors here so yeah I think we can make this work so good thing that we check these filter caps now if you look at the schematic for the amp part of this we're going to need obviously a main filter uh, but we don't need such a large value they're using a diode rectifier here and diode rectifiers are a lot harsher on the output because they're more efficient than a tube rectifier so they're gonna get a lot of ripple here we don't need to worry about that so here we're gonna put something like a 50 microfarad and then we're gonna have the resistor and then we're gonna have another I don't know 50 microfarad and then we're gonna just go up to the circuit so we're gonna need one two three capacitors four including the cathode bypass so yeah it's gonna be absolutely doable and these old filter cans they are dead so we are not even gonna bother with them we're just gonna leave them alone not touch them because they are as I said dead and that's not a big surprise they are 70 what 70 years old so it's no big surprise that those filter cans are starting to go uh, but yeah I'm gonna go grab a bit of wire and uh, so we can actually rewire some of this because this fin stuff man it's too thin in my opinion and it's getting sticky so we'll, we'll replace it the only wiring we'll keep is this stuff here which is our transformer wiring we obviously can't replace that and there's nothing wrong with it this is the good old probably asbestos isolated wire <laughs> i just want to brag a little bit about 
a little bit about this stuff here, solder week. It is fucking amazing. Look how clean that tube socket got. So all I did was I used this first and that basically makes the leads completely loose. So then you can just cut them and rip them out of there. This is amazing. This is wonderful. So I'm going to use this to clean my tube sockets up really, really well. Here's my cathode bias resistor. And there's a wire here attached here, which I'm going to try and remove. But yeah, this is freaking epic. I totally love this stuff. And it's not expensive either. And uh, the only disadvantage is it gets used up quickly, but it's not very expensive, so... Not a big deal if you ask me. Here you can see how well it how well it works. I just sucked this pin here. And you can see these leads are now completely loose in here. And I can just literally pick them out. And that just saves so much time when you're rebuilding. So yeah, they're loose. You just gotta get them out of here and that's much easier than having to fight with them and if you don't want to let's get your colors in here and cut them and pull there okay so I've now cleaned it up relatively well still should swap this line cord you know maybe i should do that before i start but i'm not really gonna cramp anything in this area anyways but i might still install a new line cord now just to make it easier on me later um first thing i'm gonna do is start constructing a capacitor bank here on this terminal strip using these nice f and t's 350 volts maybe a bit on the small side but uh, to be fair, this transformer only outputs about 300-ish volts, so after rectification that is. So these capacitors should be fine actually. So I'm gonna be using these 350 volt capacitors. Um, and we're going to put them here and here and the reason I'm going to use these is mainly because I have them and I don't want to buy more because they're expensive as hell well I actually got these for a pretty good price before this whole electronics component crisis happened uh, so yeah we're gonna we're gonna build this power supply section maybe I should swap that line cord though see if I have a line cord. I have a bunch of crap wiring here but line cords is something that I don't have millions of unfortunately. I really wish I did. And we're also gonna try and convert this over to uh, capacitive dropper so but yeah we'll worry about the line cord later. Um, yeah power supply section. Hello, so it's time for a uh, progress up upgrade here, up uh, update here on the tube amplifier rebuilding process. Uh, I've done a few things, I've installed the filter capacitors and all that jazz. Um, done a little bit of wiring, we got the filament wiring done. Uh, I've installed grid leak resistors, you can kind of see them, you can see them there, and I've installed my coupling capacitors, yes, I'm using pyramid capacitors, these are actually not paper, these are something called dye film. And these are in absolutely perfect condition. I salvaged these off of something. And these are just excellent. And I have another one here which we're going to use in the preamp section. Also an absolutely perfect capacitor. So we're going to be building with only black beauties for coupling in this amp. Which is to me 
wonderful because I really like the black beauties mainly because of the nostalgia look and all that um, I do not believe that capacitors color sound but uh, I like these ones I like the look of this um, I'm gonna wire in my cathode bias resistor for the 6L6s and it's this big one here 10 watt 125 ohms and I'm just gonna attach it here and I've got an idea for how to do that I'm going to wrap wire and attach it physically and then we're gonna run the actual connecting wire one side is gonna go to ground and the other side is gonna go to the cathodes of course once we've done that we are ready to start assembling our also we need to add a cathode bypass capacitor uh, but once we've done all that we should be ready to start uh, building the preamp section and that's going to be super simple really we have the tubes here uh, these are going to be 6s and 7s in my case but they're the same tube just different base and uh, it's going to go from input here to these so when I build an amp I like to start with the power section and then go backwards because that's honestly the easiest way to do it so yeah, we're gonna install the cathode bias resistor and bypass capacitor. They recommend a 100 microfarad, but that's actually overkill. Cause you get diminishing returns with larger values. Uh, a value which would be more suitable would probably be a, let's see if I have one which has nice leads. Another one of these 22s, electrolytics, these. One of these is more than sufficient enough for cathode bypass. In this case, there we go, I have a new one here. Because using too large value doesn't have any advantage whatsoever. So, we're gonna use 22 microfarads, that's more than enough. And uh, I've actually seen tests done on this, and uh, 22 microfarads is more or less ideal. If you go higher, you're going to get diminishing returns. You're not gonna get any returns. It's not worth putting a bigger capacitor in there. So 22 microfarads is more than good enough. So yeah, we're gonna continue building this amp, and uh, yeah, we're done. We've done some progress. We haven't done a whole lot of progress, but uh, it does take time to build, especially when you do things neatly like this. Now in hindsight, I would have put these straight like that, horizontal, but whatever it's done deed now <laughs> and it's it's gonna be more than all right uh yeah let's continue i think the soldering iron okay it is let's see 11 12 1 it's two hours later and i have finished the circuit <laughs> yeah it went pretty quick i am a pretty experienced builder so For me, to finish an amp in two hours is not that hard, but I think this one turned out pretty damn good, too. You know, this is not some kind of sloppy job, but this is a proper build here. And uh, right now, all I'm gonna do is check for solder joints that look bad, and if everything shakes out, I am willing to apply a little bit of electrons to this. On the bulb limiter, of course, but uh, yeah, and of course, I still gotta install the new power cord and uh, all that. But uh, this should be operational at this stage, so yeah, I 
think we should hook this thing up to a speaker and uh, a signal source and uh, a meter so we can check the voltages and stuff. I'm just trying to think if there is anything I forgot and I do not think so. Yeah, this is this is looking very 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 promising. Yeah. Let's apply power to this and see what happens. I'm excited. We're all set up. Got a variac, plug into the bulb limiter with just one bulb right now. Uh, let's turn the variac on, make sure it's set to zero first. And uh, yeah, here we go. See what happens here. Get a little bit of light and it goes away. We're starting to build B plus already. With 40 volts, I'm gonna keep it there. And this is the main B plus coming off the cathode. So I'm gonna wait a little while for it all to stabilize and then I'm going to take and measure the other nodes and make sure we don't have crazy voltage happening. <coughs> but nothing is exploding. Let me set up the meter. 170 volts. I don't think the tubes are gonna start to conduct because we don't have enough heater voltage. Let's give it a little bit more. 190. Fifty volts. Oh yeah, they're starting to conduct. They're starting to conduct. Let's see, what's our second node voltage? It is 170 on the screen grids. And our third voltage, 160. Looking good, looking really good. Two hundred. Let's see, if we touch the input with a screwdriver. Oh. Also, I'm not sure what the impedance selector is set to. Hundred and eighty volts. I'm gonna screw in my second bulb here. We went up to two twenty seven. Sixty eight volts input. Oh yeah, it's really starting to conduct now. Let's see, touch. We're not getting any noises. Could also be because I hear a little bit of something. It sounds like a little bit of bus but it doesn't respond whenever I touch this let's check the voltages again here screen grid 178 pre-amplifier stage 170 oh it's doing something Absolutely zero leakage, like I would expect from these. I think it's alive. But there is no hiss or anything. 
when you touch that. Uh, so let's get our signal generator hooked up to this. Well, I'm gonna keep it at reduced voltage. I think we can take it off of the bulb limiter now though. I don't believe it's going to explode. And we will connect it to our signal generator. We forgot something. <laughs> Look, there is no cathode resistor. There's no cathode resistor. Of course it's not gonna work. One, two, three, yep. I forgot the 10k cathode resistor. How the hell? Oh, fuck. No wonder it doesn't work if you don't provide a bias for the fucking tube. So yeah, we need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. <laughs> of course it doesn't work when you don't have bias going to the tube. That's more like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's more like it. That is way, way more like it. We have a lot of bus, but that's probably due to the filaments more than anything. But yeah, it's working. <laughs> There's the resistor I had to add. 10k to ground. Oh my god, it hums a lot. But like I said, it's most likely due to... And it gets worse with higher voltage. This sounds like filament. More than anything. But hey, it is alive. It just buzzes a lot. The buzz is caused by something else. But the amp itself is working. No leakage. No leakage. But then again, I wouldn't expect anything else. We need to do something about this bus, it's absolutely insane! But hey, the amp is working! And that is wonderful. Truly wonderful. Phew! If you look at the schematic, we can see here that we have the sender tap thing which you make to the filament in reference to the cathode this is extremely smart and we're gonna add that now what it does is it allows you to have this will more or less kill all the hum in this amplifier so yeah let's let's do this and uh, this is our cathode connection here and there's no, it's not really possible for me to solder to this now. I wish I'd see, thought about that earlier. But what we're going to do is we're going to connect these between here and here. And then I'll run a wire from here and up. That should work fine too. That should, that way I'll also get a use for this terminal strip. That should be able to work for us here and we should be able to get rid of the hum altogether. <laughs> and the idea is to put it to the cathodes because if you put it to chassis it will only help some watt. Putting it to the cathodes will more or less cancel all the hum. <laughs> so let's do that. I've got 120 ohm resistors here so this should work fine. Wow! That worked well. The amp is on. Ha! 
Check that out. Now that was effective. This is the small silent amp I have now. Let's see, yeah, it's set to 8 ohms. Wow! And this speaker has an efficiency of well over 90 dB. That is fucking astonishing! <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe what adding this did! And here you can see I just added it here, then it runs to the cathode here. Wow, that works well. And the amp is nice and loud. Let's increase our power a little bit. 300 volts on the main filter caps now. So that's perfect. Let's see what we have on our second on our screen grid. 250, that's what we want. Let's check our preamp stage. We have 240 volts. Our cathode has 13 volts. We are only running at a uh, we are running at about 90% of full operating voltage. Let's check the plate voltage of this too. Hold on. Hundred twenty volts. No significant leakage, which is great. Plate voltage on this or a cathode voltage, I guess that is. Yes, that's cathode voltage. Ninety-two. Plate voltage hundred forty-four. See for leakage here. Nothing. Leakage here. Nothing. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. It doesn't get any better. So yeah. Here we go. Let's increase this voltage. That's full operating voltage. Three hundred forty volts on the main B plus. Screen grid voltage 291. Let's check what our uh, actual uh, voltage is on the plates here 336, 335. Yeah, this is looking good. This is looking nice and healthy. We have nice and healthy voltages 275. And again, the screen voltage 300. It is very important that your screen voltage is lower than your plate voltage. Otherwise, electricity is simple. It takes the path. <laughs> it takes the path of least resistance, as we all know. So, if your screen grid has higher voltage than your calf. most of the electrons are going to try to go there and it can actually destroy your tube because it will just red plate it to death but the screen grid will red plate so it is extremely important that you have higher plate voltage than you have on your screen grid voltage otherwise you can run into such issues yeah this thing is working Look at output. Look at output. <laughs> it is fucking beautiful. Yeah, let's run it at around a kilohertz. It's fucking beautiful. Look at it. <laughs> it is a very very clean amp and it has got plenty of power it has got a lot of power actually yeah let's check out the clipping nice and symmetrical I'm not sure what tap I'm on on output transformer it might be Necessary to change output transformer tap a little bit. Let's 
that is lowest impedance, medium, high and off. Uh, that might be our 8 ohm tap, that's looking better. <laughs> Yeah, this is nice. A nice symmetrical clipping. Look at this. This is hard to get on a tube amp. This is more symmetrical than my Heathkit EA2 from 1957. This. This is nice. This is what we want. This is proper clipping. This is how it should look like on a valve amplifier and this is probably because we installed all modern non-driftomatic resistors in this thing we are using old school capacitors but we are using new resistors well the filter caps are brand new but for our coupling caps we're using old school caps because I like them and you can see for yourself just how perfect this amp is. <laughs> this is amazingly good. And the reason it's jumping around is because we've got a ground. Got a ground loop happening. But you can see for yourself. Do I even need to like... Let's use the variable option. There we go. You can see for yourself. Just how beautiful this is. Wow. This is one hell of an amp. <laughs> it's working so well. The only thing that I want to do to this now is replace this power cord and install a capacitive dropper so we can run it on mains. But that's a project for later. I am satisfied, to say the very least. And also, when you increase the output power on a careful biased amp, you can see the voltage goes up because there's less load on the power supply. The bias actually goes down when you do it when you increase the output power. That's one thing a careful bypass capacitor will also help with is making sure that you have all of that so you don't get too much jumping around but this is perfect this really is perfect let's try a different frequency and see if it's as perfect 10 kilohertz okay we're having triggering problems here with the smell scope why are we having triggering problems Hang on. There we go. 10,000 Hertz. We have a little bit of distortion, but that is the output transformer, I can almost assure you. Yeah, this is fine. Let's go higher, 100 kilohertz. Now let's go up to 20 kilohertz. That's Wow, something weird is going on with this scope. Okay, there we go. It really doesn't look that bad. This is 20,000 Hertz. And this output transformer is not designed for that high, I can tell you. Okay, 2,000 Hertz. I can almost assure you it's going to be absolutely spotless, so... We're going to do our variable thing here so that we get rid of the jumping square wave, jumping sine wave. Yeah, what can I say? 2200 hertz. You can see what's happening. It's <laughs> riding the supply rails a little bit. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Let's go even lower in frequency. Let's go down to 100-ish hertz. 
looks nice and clean. I am very very happy about that. Let's go down to something lower. Let's try 45 hertz. This is really pushing that output transformer. Yeah, you can see the crossover distortion here. That's caused by an output transformer when the core gets saturated. But this looks fine. This is not going to sound bad. This is going to sound alright. You're not going to hear this. Plus, you wouldn't really play subwoofers with an amp like this anyway. So, But, you know, it does show it is possible. 50 hertz... At around 60 Hz it starts to clean up significantly. It still leans forward a little bit. You can kind of see, wow, well, that's messing with the camera, isn't it? Let's go up in frequency until it stops messing with the camera. Eh, you get the idea. This actually looks kind of cool, almost like a curve tracer. But yeah, it's. you can see it's leaning forward a little bit. And if I increase the volume of the amp, now we're severely clipping. You can see it here. But it's, you're not going to be able to hear that anyways. But that artifact is there and it's caused by the output transformer. Let's go up to 70 hertz. 70 hertz also looks pretty good. 80. Now we're starting to come out of that uh, weirdness going on. Now it's starting to look more and more like a pure sine wave. Now we're at 100 hertz and it's more or less a good sine wave. Let's go to 120. Yeah, now we're out of that. But yeah, it's messing. It's with the camera sh shutter speed and all that being 30 frames per second. 120 is the third or second her no it's the third harmonic of that so it, it messes with the camera <laughs> let's go up in frequency 150 hertz yeah it's perfect it's almost pointless to because this is a perfect amp absolutely flawless Yeah, <laughs> that is amazing. I'm very happy about this. And the raw voltages are looking good. Cathode voltage is looking good on those 6L6s. They're not overheating. Everything is looking great. Right, so let's do a power output test here real quick. We're running 8 ohm dummy load right now. And this is our output voltage. Let's crank it up until we see clipping here. There we go. We see rounding. And uh, this is acceptable. You're not really going to hear this. So, but I'm going to tune it out. Until we have absolutely clean. There we go. 10 volts RMS. But again, I'm not sure if my output transformer tap is set correctly. I really have no idea. Let's see. That one made it worse. That one made it... Yeah, this is 8 ohms. There's a 16 ohm tap. And if you run 16 ohm, it will produce less power at 8 ohms. <laughs> because of impedances. It, a transformer not only transforms voltage from very high to very low, but it also transforms the impedance for the vacuum bobs. So the vacuum... Bob's, I don't know, 5000 ohms impedance per plate, and you are running a 8 ohm impedance on output. So, yeah, 10 volts are a mess, and that happens to be 12.5 clean watts of output. Not as much as you can get from 6L6s, but keep in mind, we are running a fairly low. B plus voltage here. We're running at only 330 ish on the anodes. And uh, with this lower voltage, you are not going to get more power. Uh, 
what we can do is hook up four ohms to this later and see if actually we can just do a quick little hack here. Very crappy way of doing it, but let's do it this way. Yeah, so I don't have to cut the video. Now we're at four ohms. So let's crank it up until we see clipping. We can see we get eight volts. But let's change the impedance tap. That is not proper. I think this is our best impedance tap. Yeah, this is our best impedance tap. And it is outputting, let's turn it out of clipping here, exactly 8 volts into the room. So let's see what that is. And that is more like it. That is 16 clean watts. That is, that's more like it for a pair of 6L6s. Yeah, let's pull this out. has very very weird way of connecting it but it does work wow we're really driving it now can we get more clean output from this amp yes we probably can I am extremely happy with this this is the best performing tube amp I've built and that's not an exaggeration. I've built plenty of tube amps, including single ended ones. And single ended ones, meh, they never work right. They just they don't have enough power. That's the main problem for me. Because I like to feel a little bit of bass, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this is wonderful. It's working so well. Absolutely beautiful electrolytics from FNT. We are using 40 microfarads ish for our main filter, 40 microfarads for our second filter, 40 microfarads for our third filter. These are truly excellent capacitors, these F and T's. They are the they are the best filter capacitor replacements for tube amplifiers or new tube amplifier builds. They are the absolute best. I also used one as a cathode bypass. There's been a lot of debate about working voltage on capacitors and what voltage you're actually subjecting them to. This is a 350 volt capacitor and it's only seeing 20 volts now. Is this going to cause it to go bad? I personally don't believe so, but there are people that do believe that might be the case. And... Uh, that's a fair thing to believe, especially for electrolytics, because electrolytics stay, stay formed. But uh, it's not very critical if that capacitor goes bad. And it's all I had, so it's what I used. I used Pyramid IMP capacitors as coupling they are the only coupling capacitors I used no modern capacitors here and these are rare ones which are in absolutely excellent condition and as you can see when we measured there is absolutely no leakage on these caps and that's what I of course knew and that's why I used them I tested these capacitors and I found them to be very, very healthy. And I figured I would use them in here because they are just perfect. There's nothing wrong with them. And it looks period correct. So the only things that don't look period correct is my hacked 10k resistor here. But what could I what else could I do <laughs> when I don't have one? Not gonna buy a 10k resistor single quantity only because I needed this once. Because it's extremely expensive with shipping, so we'll just have to live with that. Yeah, absolutely beautiful amp. And this turned out perfect amp. 
Now we have plenty of unused tube sockets here, and what we're gonna do with those? Well, I actually have an idea. I want to build a low pass slash high pass filter network for this amp, so you can select a band pass filter. That's the proper word, a band pass. So you can select from what frequency it should play and where it should start to roll off. Because I think all amplifiers should have bandpass filters. So, yeah, we're going to try and add some of those. <laughs> yeah, I'm smiling right now. This was totally worth the effort. And this is, this just turned out beautiful. So yeah, as I said, now when this thing is in this stage, the actual amplifier part is working good. Now we can take this inside and have a listen to this on some proper speakers. There is a lot left to do, as I said, I want to build a bandpass filter and I also want to install a capacitive dropper so you can run this 115 volt transformer on our 235-ish volt mains. But that is for later, because there's no point building a capacitive dropper for this when we are going to add more circuit, because a capacitive dropper needs to be calculated exactly. And uh, I can't calculate it, so I'm just going to experiment it. Start with a 1 microfarad, 2 microfarad, 3, 4, 5, until we get the proper voltage that we want. And... Uh, if we then start add more load to the circuit, the filaments of these for example, and the plate voltage and everything, then we are going to put more load on the dropper and it's not going to supply the full voltage anymore. So there's, it's pointless to add the dropper right now. So for now I'm just going to run it off of one of these variable transformers. I have one in my listening room too. One that is missing its knob, <laughs> but I just set it to 115 volts and it'll be good. But yeah, this is awesome. I'm very happy. And uh, yeah, I gotta clean it out a little bit. <laughs> it's just a huge mess. I like to use this battery powered vacuum cleaner. <laughs> 